here's the hard truth. Here's the one thing that nobody associated with the hockey team is going to want to speak out loud. There's really not going to be much overlap, if any overlap, between the prospects who are currently being amassed and you know who. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Pirates in the same place that you found this development camp closed up yesterday in Cranberry with the annual scrimmage. The players who were supposed to do well did well. A good time was had by all and everything else. And and being serious here, it is the first time in a really long time that you can survey this scene overall and say to yourself, there are prospects there. There are prospects. If you've been with me for a while, you'll recall a couple of development camps that I covered. This was about three or four years ago where I would just show up and say, you know what? There's one person maybe who has a shot at getting to the NHL, never mind, you know, making some kind of impact or hanging around. And I would point to Valtteri Pustinen, for example, was somebody that I singled out one year. Jan Drozg was another, and he couldn't cut it in the AHL. And not lying to you here, it, it felt like a waste of time. It felt like a waste of everything just having the event much less covering it. That's not the case anymore. When you have Braden Yeager, when you have Owen Pickering, when you have Sergei Moroshov, the goaltender who just came over from Russia, when you have both of the second rounders who were just taken, there are players, legitimate players, with legitimate hopes of helping your team. What's not there is something along the lines of The templates that I've been laying out for a while on this program based on the Bruins more than any other team, although the Kings are also a credible example of this, where you win, you win, you win, and then at some point you say, we're going to rebuild, but we're not sending Patrice Bergeron out of here, or if you're L.A., we're not sending Andre Kopitar out of here. We're going to find a way to reload Well, the Bruins and the Kings started their process a lot sooner than the Penguins, of course. The Penguins' process, really, if you think about a line of demarcation here, is the Jake Gensel trade. That's it right there. That's boom. That's when it began. That's when you make a commitment after that. to You're going to go younger, both for the near-term future and for the longer-term future. What doesn't align, though is Jaeger having any kind of impact, at least not a meaningful one, I believe, for as long as Sidney Crosby's here, or Evgeny Malkin, or Chris Letang, or even Eric Carlson. This episode is brought to you by Bet Online, your number one source for all your summer sports needs this season, from Major League Baseball, golf, NHL, NBA playoffs. Get the latest odds and lines, including all team matchups, player props, odds on just about everything that's out there. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Bet online where the game starts. Jaeger, as he and everyone in the organization have acknowledged, needs to get stronger. He needs to fill out a little bit more. And chances are excellent he's being sent back to the WHL, where He's going to be so far above the competition, I believe, that he's going to be putting up video game numbers. And no matter what it is that he tells himself, like, I've really, really got to get bigger and stronger, it's very different than having the actual physical motivation to do it. In other words, if he's getting knocked around like a rag doll in the AHL, or think of Jack Hughes' rookie season in New Jersey, you know, where everybody was just whipping him all over creation until he showed up a lot stronger the following year for the Devils. He's not, yeah, you see where I'm going here? But the reason that I bring this up isn't to make it all sound like doom and gloom and despair or whatever. The reason I bring it up is that I want to underscore why 
I like a lot the offseason that Kyle Dubas has had to date. If you've been listening to this show, you'll know that I really didn't like the one he had a year ago. This one has been different. This one, he has been pursuing all kinds of players who are kind of mid-20s or late 20s, but they've still got their legs. They've still got their wheels. They've still got their energy. They've still got their fire. You and I can right now scratch down on a napkin a top six for the Penguins. We can also scratch out a top four on defense. What it'd be lacking, theoretically, is the same thing that was lacking through most of last season, which is, you know, there's got to be that oomph. There's got to be that jump. Yeah, it's nice if they can score, but it's nicer if they can at least wear the other team down a little bit. The guys the Penguins got last year, all these 30-somethings to fill out their bottom six, did neither. They never scored. They never sustained the attack. They never got in anybody's faces. They never were hard to play against, which you recall was the goal, the stated goal of both Dubas and Mike Sullivan at the time. This group, the one that's going to go into camp, comes with a lot of options, which is also healthy because that's competition, but also a lot of people in that age bracket. Now, yeah, I know you're thinking right now, yeah, they got Kevin Hayes, and they did get Kevin Hayes. They got Kevin Hayes in large part, I thought this was obvious, to get that second rounder from the Blues in 2025. That's a nice future asset. But almost all of the rest of the recent acquisitions have been people who fall into the category that I'm describing. And that's good. That's good. Because they can and will be ready to overlap with Sid and Gino and everybody else. The kids in Cranberry, not so much. When we come back, J1Q. comes from Matt, who says, DK, I know the prospects aren't much to write about yet, but is there enough to have a little hope? The last couple of drafts seemed good. The Jake Gensel trade brought back some pieces. Is it enough to get excited that the future won't be Generation X again? Oh, man. Poor Generation X. I mean, before I proceed here, I covered Generation X, and... Look, I know they weren't good enough, obviously. At one point, they had an 18-game losing streak. But they tried so hard, and there were actual players on that roster. Marc-Andre Fleury was on that roster. Don't forget, Brooks Orpik was on that roster. For a very brief period of time, I should add, the greatest player in hockey history was on that roster. But yeah, I get it. That's always the fear in Pittsburgh among hockey fans is that everything could go back to that. Uh, I blame that largely on the Pirates because when they have rebuilds, they tend to be a half decade of abject embarrassment before they can even float back up to 500 as they're doing now. But the one point I think that would probably be best to make here, even though it's not a direct answer to your question, is that the salary cap has changed everything. I really believe that Pittsburghers need to stop fearing the future here. You don't have to be the Red Wings and suck for 10 years just because you've lost Pavel Datsuk and Henrik Zetterberg. The Red Wings made a lot of really bad personnel decisions in that time. They made one really, really good one in Dylan Larkin. They made a spectacular draft pick in Morris Sider. But a lot of the Red Wings' problems were their own doing. You can build back up quickly in any cap league. It gets discussed most often in the NFL, but it's also a reality in the NHL. If you go back to Generation X, that was caused 100% by finances. Penguins couldn't afford to keep any of those guys that they let walk away or that they traded for picks. 
It wasn't just Yarmir Yager. It was Alexei Kovalev. It was Robert Lang. It was Martin Straka. All of them. Boom, 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 boom. Just like that. Gone and replaced by assets because they could not pay the bills. This isn't an issue at all in Pittsburgh anymore. Here's another thing the team wouldn't want to talk about openly. They're making a lot of money. The Penguins do really, really, really well. And not just the hockey operation, but also you can't nosedive your payroll in the NHL even if you want to. There's a minimum. Every salary cap system has both a ceiling and a floor. And the NHL's floor is around $20 million less than the ceiling. So one way or another, when Sid and Gino and these other guys are gone, that's a lot of cap space freed up. I don't mean to make it sound like a positive, like, yeah, get rid of those guys for cap space. Get rid of Sid. But when they are gone, that's monstrous cap space. You can be the ultimate player in free agency. But what you want to have in the interim, and this again is what I like about what Kyle Dubas is doing, is an undercurrent, a foundation of young talent that's coming up and buttressing that. It's smart. I understand that it's also difficult. You've got Sid sitting there right now waiting for his final contract, and Sid wants to see that you know, his teams aren't going to suck in his final three years. He's way too competitive to go along with that. But a lot of those pieces are already there. They just need some support and they definitely need immediate youth. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody who listens to Daily Shot of Penguins. We're going to do one more of these tomorrow. 